Hello, I'm Mr. Steinauer, and this is third and fourth grade science. Today, we're talking about the force of friction and its effects on moving objects. All you're going to need for today's lesson is a plastic cup, a piece of paper folded in half, and a wooden or plastic spoon or spatula from the kitchen. Go ahead and get those things, set them aside, and we'll get started. As you're getting the materials together, let's review some of what we've discussed already. We've been talking about forces, and we've been learning more and more about Isaac Newton and Isaac Newton's three laws of motion. So far, we've discussed Newton's second law of motion and Newton's third law of motion. Before we review those, let's introduce Newton's first law of motion. Isaac Newton's first law of motion says that an object that is in motion will stay in motion unless another force acts on it. It's also true, and this is just the reverse of the first part of the first law, that an object at rest will stay at rest unless another force acts on it. Now, we're going to take Newton's first law, we're going to use the materials that you collected, and we're going to put it to the test. We're going to show that Isaac Newton's first law of motion is true. Now, let's review the other laws of motion as well. Isaac Newton's second law of motion says that the acceleration or the speeding up of an object depends on the amount of matter inside of it, its mass, and the amount of force used to put it in motion or to move it. And Newton's third law says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We discussed Newton's third law in our previous lesson, and the second law a little bit before that. These three laws of motion taken together have really transformed how scientists see the world and how we all understand forces. Today, to jump into Newton's first law of motion, that an object in motion will stay in motion unless another force acts on it, and an object at rest will stay at rest unless another force acts on it. To understand that first law of motion, we've got to understand what friction is. Friction is simply a push force acting on another force. An example of this is when we roll a ball in the grass. Eventually, the friction force coming from the ground that pushes against the direction of that ball's rolling is going to stop that ball. Another example of everyday friction force comes from the ground and the sidewalk. When you move in your car or with your body down the sidewalk or driving on the streets, there's a force coming from the ground that pushes against your tires and pushes against your feet or your shoes. An everyday example of friction that we can test right now to observe friction is by putting our hands together. Go ahead and do that now. And then what we're going to do is move one hand up and then back down. You can do this, you can alternate and move like that. Now as one hand pushes up, there's a friction force coming from my other hand that pushes against that force. And when I push down, there's a friction force that pushes up coming from my other hand. Now something that we often get from friction is heat. As you rub your hands together, you'll notice that they get warmer and warmer. That always happens from friction. That push force against another force creates heat. That's also why you'll see people who are very cold often rubbing their arms or rubbing their hands together because we know that that rubbing can create heat. The reason for that heat is the force of friction. Next, Let's use friction to test Isaac Newton's first law of motion. 
You're going to use those materials at the very end of the lesson or even after our lesson together. So let's keep those set aside. I will use my materials to show you how to do this demonstration of friction and Isaac Newton's first law of motion. Then we'll walk through it together and finally you on your own will complete this demonstration. So, I've got my three materials here. My wooden spoon, you might also have a spatula, or another long, uh, mostly flat kitchen utensil. I've got a piece of paper that I folded in half, long ways. And finally, I've got my cup, a plastic cup. We don't want to use glass for this activity, and you'll see why here in just a moment. Before we demonstrate Newton's first law of motion, that an object in motion will stay in motion unless another force acts on it, and that an object at rest will stay at rest unless another force acts on it, we also gotta understand one more concept. So we already know that friction is a push force that opposes another force. We're going to put friction against the force of inertia. Inertia is a universal force that opposes motion. Inertia is a property of all matter. It's what allows things to stop, to rest, to quit moving. We have a lot of inertia when we get up out of the bed. Sometimes it's really hard, we're super tired. So the inertia within us, that property we have that opposes motion, we fight that every day. This cup is experiencing inertia. This paper is experiencing inertia. And this inertia, is stronger than any other force that's around it right now. So we see right here Newton's first law of motion. Objects at rest are staying at rest unless another force acts on it. To set this demonstration up, I'm going to put the piece of paper toward the edge of my table, the workspace. Then I'm going to put the cup on top of it. Now remember, this is friction versus inertia to show Newton's first law of motion. If I pull this paper out slowly, what's going to happen to the cup? Well, let's test it out. Was your hypothesis correct? Did you think that the cup was going to fall off the table when we pulled the paper out slowly? That's because the friction force was stronger than the inertia. An object at rest will stay at rest unless another force acts on it. And that's what happened with the friction. Friction acted on the inertia of the cup and made it move. Now our second demonstration here. We're going to use our kitchen utensil, in this case a wooden spoon, and we're going to use that to move the paper quickly out from underneath the cup. What's going to happen to the cup? Let's find out. Three, two, one. Was your hypothesis correct that time? In this case, the friction could not overcome the inertia. Because we moved so quickly, because the friction force couldn't last for very long on that cup, the inertia, that universal force that opposes motion, was stronger. So we saw in two different cases, Isaac Newton's first law of motion is true. Now it's your turn. Use your three materials at home to replicate this activity. This is a demonstration of Newton's first law of motion. Now practice it to yourself a couple of times and then show some loved ones. You might even tell them that you're putting the force of friction against the force of inertia. And then of course you can tell them what friction and inertia are. It's been my pleasure having you in class today. My name is Mr. Steinauer, and I'll see you next week.